All right, everyone. So welcome to yet again another Monday night charting session due to the holiday uh, today. So just to start off, I'm going to mention this like I do almost every time. I'm going to end the charting session with SPY uh, and or S&P. So if you want to see that happen, you'll have to wait till the end. I like to keep the overall market view the last thing we talk about, since that is kind of the most important in my personal opinion. So as we do go through the stocks, like I was saying earlier, type more stuff in, specific tickers, maybe ideas you may have. If you think I missed a specific zone or setup, don't be afraid to say, hey, can you go back to this stock? I, I, have, an, I have a question about uh, support you put, or I have a question about a trend that could be forming that you didn't point out. Don't ever be hesitant to speak your mind because you may be thinking of something that no one else sees and it's correct. So don't ever feel like it's a bother for you to stop me or just ask a question. So just to start, I'm going to go with, uh, we're going to do Tesla, AMD, and shop. And I'll try and keep a good mindset on the uh, sequence we're going in. So a lot of these stocks, I do keep the same charting that we had from the week before, so I don't have to redo everything. So I'll just speak on where it currently is based off what we thought was going to happen the week uh, prior with the week uh, leading up to this. So going off Tesla, we had that pullback. And just like always, I want to make sure you guys understand where the week started on every stock. So where this highlight is, I just put, I'll change this to white just so it stands out a little bit better. So this is Monday of last week where the white highlight is. So I was telling you guys when we had this charting, we're going to be focused on basically pushing up. We had a major support. Why oh, is it not clicking? There we go. We had this support zone that I put in at roughly 245 a share, 244 a share. And I remember mentioning to you guys that we'd have to hold this to have that uptrend momentum and push more to the upside compared to the downside. If we go to the larger frames, which I'm going to go to the daily just to give the uh, bigger picture visual. I may have to go to the four hour actually because all these gap ups over the weekend or well, over the nights. For those of you that may not know, if you're on the daily, you usually cannot see pre-market and after hours. So if you cannot see the gap fills with the pre-market and after, you may want to go to the four hour or the two hour just to get the visual representation of where the stock actually is. So like what I was saying earlier with that 245 area and the 244, the reason I was talking about that, before we had this major gap down on Tesla, there was multiple zones. Obviously, it's a big spread from about 206 a share to the top range of roughly 260, but I'm focused on the in-between rejections. Everything I do is based off larger frames with charting. I want to have the bigger picture in mind, and that's why I'm always looking at okay, where did the stock have the most repetitive rejections and or most repetitive support bounces? So when looking at Tesla back in May of 2022, all the way until about July of 2022, we were zoning. We had multiple rejections around that 245 to 250 area. We tapped out a few times at highs at roughly 260 a share, and that acted as the main support after the breakout happened, and we had that recontest, which is in this area right here that I just highlighted. Every resistance that breaks, I like to expect a pullback for that to act as a support, and I recommend the same thing just to have lower risk in your trades moving forward. So using that 245 a share area as the support historically, I'm going to take the chart down to the 30 minute only because we don't have much to see on the larger frames with where we currently are. We're at highs on the year for Tesla right now. Not all time, just on the year. So when using this 245 to 250, Anywhere in this area, we are expecting, since historically it was resistance, now that price action is above that 245 a share, we're expecting a pullback to that zone is going to hold that support. So that's the main focal point when I'm looking at stuff like this. When Tesla held on Monday and it had that push up, at that point, using the in the moment timeframes, which I'm talking the month of June, the month of May. There's not much historical levels to use. That, that requires you to go to the four hour or the larger frames and work back to 2022 times where you can actually find price action in this area. Tesla right now, and I see you guys typing in the chat, so I'll switch over to that once I finish uh, my analysis to see what you guys are saying. We're looking at almost a double top on Tesla, and I'm going off smaller frames. I'm not focused on we're having higher lows, higher highs. We're pushing upside in a bullish trend. I'm focused on 
support and resistance for now. A lot can happen before market opens tomorrow. So I don't want to get too in depth on the idea of levels around current price action. I'm only going to be talking about the main levels. If like the resistance around 263 to 265, if we break this and push up, that's when you're going to want to go to the larger frames, the four hour, the daily, and see what next level above Tesla would be that uh, contention for that reject. Using the support, looking at the bounce we had on Monday, I'm focused on the fact that when we pulled back, we made a higher low. So I'm going to move this highlight just to overlay what I'm talking about. That pullback on Monday, we pushed Tuesday. Wednesday, we pulled back. And Thursday was that open bounce we had to make that higher low. So trends were holding a bullish sediment on the smaller frames. When that uh, push happened, we had a slight retraction. And Friday, we pushed back up to basically this double top. And that's the main zone that needs to break for continuation on Tesla. Like I've uh, mentioned a, a few times, I'm very big on buying calls on a pullback to a trend or maybe a heavy support. I personally don't like buying breakouts and forcing calls on a double top break or just uh, higher highs on trends. So when looking at Tesla, if we do break on the upside that 263 to 265 a share, I personally would focus on, let me see if I can pull this up real quick, push to the upside, and I want to see this resistance retract and hold this support. That is how I personally trade. Others play breakouts. That's fine. I'm giving my like my trading style, basically. And let me see what you guys are saying real quick. How about a bounce at? Uh, oh, you're talking about Microsoft. Okay. Go ahead and type uh, questions in the in the Zoom chat right here. Economic calendar, light this week. Powell will testify in two days this week on monetary policy, but don't expect nothing new from him. He already said in FOMC. Yeah, I feel like a lot of stuff was priced in, and that's one of the main things I'm focused on is the idea of like uh, S&P slash SPY. We're at that rejection zone at that 440, and it's going to play a huge role into are we going to reject? Are we going to consolidate at this high before breaking uh, more higher highs on the smaller frames of making that trend going upside? So it's going to be like a wait and see what happens type of week, I feel like. And it is also a short week as well. Uh, we're going to switch over to AMD now, which I think is this one. Yeah. So AMD, I'm going to go off what I was telling you guys this past week when we were charting this. All the levels are still valid, obviously. When supports break on the downside, they now act as resistance and vice versa. So I was telling you guys about how I wanted to see AMD on this cup, which I had to switch to the two hour for this visual. AMD was forming a cup and handle before we broke down on Friday. And what I mean by that, when you look at the setup right here, ignore all the stuff that I'm hiding right now. So this pullback, we were expecting a hold on that 123 a share level to have that push to the upside. We were forming that cup on AMD, had the handle formation and Sadly, we broke on the downside. Not every setup is valid, and that's one thing I like to preach because there's no such thing as a golden setup. There's no such thing as like, oh, this indicator is going to make you so successful. Everything is based off risk to reward. Are you sizing super heavy on that one trade you think is going to be like the killer? And if you're wrong, that oversizing is going to affect you very heavily. So it's not really about a trading style, not about setups, patterns, uh, indicators. Sizing is the biggest thing that comes into play when doing any type of trading. Since AMD broke that 123 a share area, which we had as a major support. If you look at the wicks on this, uh, the wick we had, that's on Tuesday, that wick on AMD, we bounced right back up. We wicked down again on uh, Wednesday, pushed back up. Thursday, we tried to hold. Friday was the weekday. We broke right through that 123 a share and we dropped all the way to roughly 120 a share. The next main support I have on AMD, if we can catch that buying pressure, AMD shows strength, we have a zone at roughly 117 a share, which is going to act as the main support. If this support breaks on AMD, that's when you expect the gap fill to the previous higher high, which is going to be down here, around 111 a share. So it's about a 7 to $8 drop if we break that 117, 118 a share. If we do push back up, I expect a rejection now at the 123 a share. Since that historically acted as, acted as a support, I now see that acting as a resistance for the stock price. And also, say we reject the 123, 
the valid play would then be the gap filled down to that 117, 118 of Shager. Let me see what you guys are seeing. I'm new to the Rippy group. What is your strategy? Reversal scalping. You said you don't like breakout trading. Just want to be able to follow along with your thesis. So the way I personally trade, I am very big on a uh, low risk, high reward. So from my, like everything I talk about, all my preaching is based off my personal experience with trading, not just I'm talking the talk. I'm actually walking the walk when I speak what I say. So all of my back testing I've done, my journaling, my trade reviews, breakout trading has always been my weakness. Even when the trade breaks out, I'm always questioning myself as to when do I want to sell? How much higher can this really go? I don't have more of a price target when I play breakouts compared to buying a support and seeing that reversal hit to gain that buying pressure on the volume. So for me, I like to play larger zones, calls off support, puts off resistance. I don't just buy when it touches. Like if, if AMD comes down to that 117 to 118 a share, the minute, whether it's a 30 minute candle, the one hour candle, if it touches the zone, I don't just buy in blindly and say, oh, it, I'm going calls because my level just touched. I'm using multiple uh, correlating stuff with volume, the tape. I'm looking at uh, whether I'm using my EMAs or the VWAP, whether it's out on the day of. I'm not just saying, oh, my zone touched. I have to get in. I'm looking for confirmation. So like when I'm looking at AMD from these past few times, I can see it held. Let me get, uh, I have a lot of highlights going on. Give me a second. So when I'm looking at AMD, so green. So when we had this uh, bottom, come on, there we go. First we formed, quote unquote, bull flag, consolidation on the breakout from earnings. We pushed up and came down. We bounced, came back down, bounced. So I'm using historical analysis and the support zone based off price action to use in my favor of if the stock keeps dropping downside, logically and going off historical movements, 117 to 118 a share should hold as support. So my risk buying calls down here is way more minimal than buying puts because if I buy puts and we have like a, a little drop and push right back up, my only thought process is going to be where is my cut level if we keep pushing higher? When I'm looking at gap fills playing calls at the bottom, if we break downside and we close a candle underneath a specific level that I have, I'm cutting right away, basically right where I entered, which is lowering my risk. Logically, if we bounce off this area, calls is going to be the best reward play. Puts is only valid if the continuation of price action is selling off and there's no hesitation of buyers hitting. So that's why I personally play major zones and reversals. So pull back to support, I'm buying calls a breakout to a heavy resistance and it's consolidating showing weakness, I'm going puts. Will I play breakouts occasionally, but I don't lean into that strategy. I'd rather wait for proper setups before I do anything. Uh, and I think the other one, Perez, you said shop, right? Yeah, shop, shop, shop. I'm working my way down the Zoom chat. So as you guys see me charting, just uh, put stocks down, ask questions. I'm slowly scrolling down to the current messages because there's just been three. After shop, I'm going to be doing snow and Chevron. So let me go to my four hour real quick on shop. So here is another example. When I'm using, like I always teach off how I personally chart. I want to hear how you guys chart. As I'm doing this, if you have a different strategy, don't be afraid to say, oh, well, what about this level? That's always great to do because we have engagement and I can chart for other perspectives so people understand. The way I chart is not how everyone does it. A lot of people chart way different. A lot of people don't even use levels. They use indicators like the EMAs. That's the whole purpose of being vocal and trying to be interactive with everybody. So on the four hour here, first thing I'm focused on, we're kind of forming a little rising wedge with higher highs, higher lows. Can this be invalid and break on the downside? Yes, that is correct. Another thing I'm noticing, I'm looking at rejections that happened historically that are now acting as a support. We had a wick up right here. This area, we pushed up heavy, pulled back. The next time we even touched that, yes, we broke upside, but we sold off instantly. So I know this area, it's not a pinpoint of $63.96 a share. I'm just focused on the zone to start watching the stock in that uh, area of price action. So it's like when I'm looking at areas, it's like $63 to $64 a share. I want to start watching the stock. I want to see if this support can hold since price action is pulling back down towards it. 
that's what I'm focused on the most. If I switch this down to the two hour real quick, the past day on Thursday, we had that wick and pushed up. Two days before that, yes, we fell down, liquidity grab, whatever you want to call it. That's where this trend line comes in. So overall, the zone that we have roughly between $63.50 a share up to about $64 a share, we have a zone. If price action is above, it usually acts as support when it pulls back. If we are underneath that zone and push upside to it, it acts as a resistance and it drops the stock back down. If we're going off just the idea of where's the gap fill, where's the best entry for calls and or puts, where we're sitting right now with shop, it's going to determine on market open tomorrow if we gap down, if we gap up. For the way I trade and how I tell people don't risk, don't force a trade because you just want to buy into something. Everything with shop in between here is literally just zoning. If you're trying to buy calls halfway through, you're basically hoping for continuation on the upside. Buying calls at the trend line of the higher, uh, higher lows at the bottom here, where this white line is now moving. Your risk is going to be a break, whether it's the trend break or the support break. So your risk is very minimal compared to the possible reward of being this gap fill of the rising wedge. I'm looking at risk to reward. I'm not just focused on, oh, calls are going to be so much safer. I'm just going to buy. Where's the price target for the upside on calls? Where's your risk if you buy calls and the support breaks on the downside? Where are you going to sell for your risk? I'm always calculating this, whether I'm entering an hour after I figure it out or the trade never aligns and I never take it. I want to be prepared so that when the moment occurs, I already have a plan as to what I'm going to do, uh, what contract I'm looking at getting, the time on the expiration. I'm pre-planning and not just blindly saying, oh, I'm at this area, I have to get in instantly. I, I can't hesitate, I have to buy in. So with shop, I'll just briefly uh, recap this before I move on to snow. If we're looking at the trends, that's what we're currently holding for these higher lows. If we want to see a pullback to roughly $64 a share, if you want to give a technical $63.50 up to $64 a share, that zone is going to act as a heavy support. We're going off the liquidity grabs on these drops and sends. Historically, we pushed up around that area and we rejected instantly. Buying pressure could not keep the breakout solid. So if anyone would have bought this breakout, it comes right back down. A massive sell-off. Going historically again, we push, push, push. Huge sell-off. So I'm always focused on major zones, larger time frames, not the five minute, not the 15. I want to see the bigger picture and work my way around that. Uh, let me switch over to snow and I'm going to scroll down to see what questions real quick. Okay, so question about your strategy. When it comes into your zone, I'm assuming you're not putting your stop at the bottom of the zone since risk would be too high. Are you using a higher low entry on a smaller time frame? Okay, so yeah, now you're asking the questions that include buying into the play. And Perez basically answered that too. Uh, what is your stop, a new low? I understand the thesis on a higher time frame, but intraday, these things are obviously significantly difficult. Yeah, so uh, I'll give this example on snow since that's going to be the one I'm talking about next. I want to try and keep this going while answering the questions in the process. So I'll give an example right here. So when I'm looking for entries, just like you specified, I'm focused on the larger frames for the zones. When I know, like currently snow is at where it should bounce. Historically, we rejected a double top. Now we're pulling back down the price action. The breakout happened for one day. The very next day on Friday, we had a sell off and we're right back to that zone that held historically rejections. Now it should act as a support. So I take this down to the 30 minute, the 15 minute, and I'm looking for an entry based off the smaller candles for me. I have the idea of the zone. I understand the zone is in this area. So I want to see how snow builds up on the 15-minute candles. I'm very big for me personally, not trading on the five-minute candles. I like to see the 15s form. I like to see the 30-minute form. I don't want to rush into a play based off the one-minute or the five-minute candles. So if snow pushes up on the 15, pulls back before the candle closes, I can see it's a selling pressure candle. It's pushing up, heavy sellers pushing it right back down. I'm using the smaller time frames to enter into my position. When using the idea of entering and buying in, I use my levels on the larger frames. So if my conviction is a percent loss, I'll sell right away without even the stock or the uh, chart breaking a specific level or a zone. But if I'm entering with a lot of time, I can afford to hold this with my thesis of I'm adding time to this play. 
yes, I'll be paying more for the contract, but that's why I'm buying time because it may take a day or two to maybe consolidate. Maybe it doesn't bounce right away, but it still has that strength of buying pressure. So finding zones, larger frame, finding the thesis of why I want to buy in. Smaller frames is when I make my entry. I always buy off of anything above the 15 minute. I never go below unless I'm trying to scalp, which I don't do very often. Let me see if you said anything. Hopefully that answered your question, uh, Blue Mav. If you have any more, keep asking. This is good. And now you guys are dropping stocks. This is this is even better. Let me go back. So let's talk about snow real quick. Snow, there's not much to talk about, only because the breakout that happened was a false breakout. We had the pullback to this support zone that historically was a rejection. The reason I have that 183 level was because historically going off the lower highs, we had the level here around 189. And then the next tap out level was roughly around when the 184 share level. I use those levels in the current price action only because historical price action always reoccurs when that price hits the same way. So just going off the double top, once we broke above, I want to see if snow can hold this week at this support. If we keep dropping lower, that's when I will use my overall levels and see how we react at 183 a share, see how we act at 181 a share, and then my main support break of trends will be roughly 176 a share if we get that low. I'm not expecting a sell-off. I'm not expecting a push-off either. I'm only going off what I see, and I'm making my instinctive move in the moment. I'm just preparing my levels. And I'm going to wait for the stock to come to where I want it. I'm not going to force the play. If snow, say it gaps up and it opens at 186 and it starts pushing right open. Me personally, I'm not going to buy that. Even if it shows heavy strength, I don't want to buy right off open, right off the first 30 minutes of open. Even if it keeps going up to 189 a share, 190 a share, I'm not going to be upset because that's not my personal trading style. I don't like trading open. I usually avoid that because I know my hit rate on open is way less than how I usually play intraday. So I'd like to see snow just make its few candles off the first few hours of open tomorrow. I don't want to rush the play. If we gap down heavy, I'll be looking to see if we can push back up because if we do push down to say 184 a share, 183, and we have that push back to this yellow highlight at roughly 185 a share, I'm not going to buy calls based off, oh, we're going to break out. I want to see how the volume comes in. I want to see how the candles form on the 15, the 30 minute. I'm giving it time to form. I'm not just buying in blindly. So with this 185, a share area, the historical double top, I want to see if support's going to hold. If not, we have the 183.3 level, uh, roughly 181 a share also a support. There's going to be a lot of consolidation and hesitation in between those two levels. If we do gap down under the 184 a share, there's going to be a lot of just up, down, chop. So don't feel like you have to force a play or like have that hope of this is going to shoot right back to the upside. Be patient with it and just see what happens. Uh, Chevron, I may have to type this one in, I think. I don't think we've looked at this before. So this next one is going to be Chevron. And since I don't think I've charted this on TradingView before, so I'm going to do what I usually have in mind when I uh, charge stuff for the first time on a new platform, I'm starting on the daily time frame just to get an overall idea of what Chevron has been doing in the price action it may be in. Just going off the daily, we're heavily consolidating. It looks like about six to seven days, nonstop back to back from 160 down to 156 a share, up, down, up, down. We do have a massive support around this area right here. I'm going off all these wicks, the candles that came down, pushed back up. There was a lot of action here. If we zoom in on this specific area, we broke upside. We broke upside. We pulled back and held support massively, pushed back up even higher. Every time we had this zone pull back and hold or touch, the candles showed strength. This major gap down, yes, that happened. We saw heavy buying pressure at the bottom here, at roughly 140 a share. You can't predict something like this. So once price action got back above that level, me personally, I wait to see how it pushes on the break, and I want to see a pullback to that zone to hold support. That's how I personally trade with low risk, high reward. So now that we have an idea of the main support, I'll take this down to the four hour, the two hour. I want to see pre-market. I want to see after hours. I want to see a good visual of where a good entry may possibly be 
around the current price action. The main support I have is roughly 150 uh, for a share. We had a lot of liquidity grabs on these red candles. Once we broke under, we broke right back above. And as you can see here, that breakout pulled back and it held there. Yes, it was pre-market after hours, but the zone held with buying pressure. And that's what pushed it back up. So now in this slight consolidation, like I was saying earlier, roughly 160 a share at resistance, supports at roughly 156 a share. We kind of have this little zone going on, just up, down, up, down. So the biggest thing that I personally focus on, I'm looking at, okay, if we break support, I want to see if we can recontest and act as a resistance and push this back down. Is the oil and energy sector hot? XLE, is it hot? Is that the main sector with rotation? Is money filtering into the oil and energy sector? Is, could that push Chevron since that is one of the major uh, funds in that uh, ETF? I'm always looking at the overall market when making plays, when thinking about plays. If Chevron breaks above that 160 a share, could we pull back and hold support? If you want to play the breakout, that's fine. But you have to realize not every breakout continues on the upside. Are you doing it to scalp? Are you doing it just to play and get out? Are you looking for the bigger move with continuation? That's what you have to think about. If your style is a scalper, you can play the breakout because you already have that instinct of I'm buying and I'm selling right away. So with my personal, like biased, obviously, everything I say is based off how I trade. If you guys feel a different way, like I've been saying, don't be afraid to say something or ask questions. Uh, Blue Mav, that was about snow, I think. So your stop for, on that example for snow would be previous swing low around 183 a share. I would stop out at 183 a share. And if I don't have that, the biggest thing I'm focused on is, okay, if I enter this call or whatever position it is and it goes the opposite direction, did I size light enough that I can hold this down 50% red, down 60% red? If I oversize because I'm so confident, I have that ego of this has to be right. I'm not worried. A lot of people will hold a position only because they don't want to accept the fact they have to sell for a loss. A lot of people throw everything out the window. Their, their sell losses, their stop loss, they, all they care about is I can't afford to lose this trade. I have to hold. So if I know I oversized and my emotions kick in, I'll sell the trade even before my level touches. Everything is based off emotion. Every trader will tell you that is like a successful trader. If they're questioning their position, half the time they'll just sell and just get out of it. They will literally not just hold and say, well, my level hasn't touched yet. If they're oversized and they know they're oversized, I've seen Hassan do it a few times. Everyone does it. I've done it. Uh, Jarvis has done it. Everyone does it. If you're oversized and the position is stagnant, you're losing uh, the theta and the IVs kicking you and the, the values dropping, even though the stock's holding, you start to question, do I really want to hold this? Can I afford this to drop and me lose a little bit of money on this position? If you're size light, you can hold it to the level. Like with snow, if your size is extremely light, like for me, if I'm size light, that 183 level, that is my cut if I can afford to hold it that low. If I have a week of expiration entering at like 185 a share and it drops to 183, you'll be down roughly 35, 40% for the week of contract. Can you afford to hold that much down if you may have oversized? So also with stop losses and just cutting positions, it also comes into play with the idea of, Am I sized correctly that I can hold this whichever way it goes to the zone I have to cut off of a visual? Not just, oh, I'm down 50%. I need to get out of this. Well, is the stock still holding support? Why are you selling if it's still holding support? Did you oversize and you're worried about the money you could lose? That's how I always think about it. So going off Chevron, and I'll end this pretty quick so I can keep moving on with you guys. I'm focused on the support at roughly 156 a share. And I'm focused on this resistance. This resistance has been in effect. When it wasn't resistance, it acted as support. You have to understand how price action works based off historical movements. Price action is huge. It's literally one of the biggest factors, quote unquote, indicators that you can use as a trader. It gives you the blueprint. It gives you the cheat code if you just like trust it, if that makes sense. Not every zone is effective 100%. You have to understand that as well. You can't size a full port basically telling yourself, oh, Chevron's at 156 a share, it usually holds, I'm going all in on calls. If this breaks on the downside, even say 50 cents a share, on the 30 minute, that wick could pull back up and that candle can finish green. You could be scared out of that position if you're looking at it on the one minute or the five minute. So you always have to size accordingly to the idea of, if we break this level, we can always shoot right back up the very next day if you're swinging that. 
liquidity grab, liquidity grab. Once we finally got below, touch that level back down, touch the level back down. Once we got above, it tried to hold, failed, came right back down. That's this level at 156, it has a purpose. I'm not just putting it there because the last, what, week, week and a half. If you go back, you will find reasoning as to why 156 a share is heavy. You'll find reasoning why 160 a share is heavy. So I'd be focused on if we can hold support at 156, maybe a few 30-minute candles, an hour candle, maybe show a huge green engulfing candle on the upside, you have conviction to buy and hold the gap fill back to 160 or just trim your contracts along the way. If you look at the like intraside of this zone, there's going to be a lot of his, uh, hesitation around 158 to 159 a share. That middle zone is going to have a purpose as well. So when this breakout happens, whether it's the upside or the downside, this could run. And if I am given my personal, like, this is what I think could happen with this, energy is slowly getting filtered with the rotation of money. Energy, material sector, real estate, they're slowly working their way back into the market. Chevron could easily break 160 a share and fill that next gap to roughly 165 to 166 a share. There's a lot of chances that could happen. So you don't want to assume the breakout will fill that. But if we hold support at 156, that gives you more conviction, the size light, maybe add two to three weeks of time, see if Chevron can hold and give that buying volume a chance to push on the upside. Uh, I got to scroll up a little bit. Snow, Chevron, Microsoft, that's what someone said. I may have to search this one too. Let's see what Microsoft has to offer. So Microsoft, uh, I usually I do my charting on Webull usually for those of you that may know what Webull is. And I don't have any charting on Microsoft on TradingView right now. We broke all-time highs. If you want to call it a double top, you can, but we pulled back massive on Friday, it looks like. So I'm going to switch to the four-hour only because I have a rough idea as to the only main level that matters. And that's going to be this double top after the all-time high wicked and pulled back back in uh, 2021 of November. So I'm going to put a level around this area. It's not a pinpoint. One thing I preach about, I never put levels. Not I shouldn't say never. I don't usually put levels at a specific decimal. So like where it's at now, $344.10. I'm not focused on a percent or a decimal to the exact point. I just want to have a level so I know historically around here is important. That's one of the biggest things I like to do for myself. So now going back to the current times, we are doing our best, well, not our best, but the stock is doing its best to kind of show strength around that 344 a share area, which was the double top after the first all-time high that hit. If Microsoft pulls back and your level is dead on, uh, Anch, I think that's how you pronounce it, A-N-S-H. You said 338.32. Literally, that's the previous double top before the breakout. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That's literally, like, that is the liquidity grab if we pull back on the larger frames. Market makers and hedge funds are going to eat up this dip by. It's not guaranteed, though. I'm always going to give you that disclaimer. It's not guaranteed. If we pull back on Microsoft, we literally just hit all-time highs. People know and they recognize that. They're not just looking at Microsoft like, oh, all-time highs hit, we rejected. It's time to short this thing right back down to the ground. Every time tech gets hot, tech runs off trends. If you're looking at the five-minute, the 15-minute, I guarantee you it looks bearish. But if you go to the one-hour, the two-hour, the four-hour, Microsoft is literally bullish as heck. I'm trying not to cuss. Microsoft is bullish. Last time we pulled back, Previous high, sell off. We held once again three times the same setup. Push, pull back, push, double top, double top, pull back. Held that support, push right back up. We're in the same sequence. We're pushing, we're pulling back. If we hit that 338 a share area, that is going to be a support. If we don't pull back to that zone, me personally, I do not buy the position. I want to wait for the best possible low risk, high reward scenario. I will not force a play based off FOMO. I will not buy in off the all-time high break because for me, I have no other levels. If you want to use the fibs, you can find, but I don't have levels based off visuals. It's like NVIDIA. NVIDIA is at all-time highs. It keeps running. You have no specific level from a visual perspective as to where it's going to tap out. I'm not buying all-time highs. I want to see a pullback, a healthy pullback. 
catch that liquidity grab, ride it up. Sell along the way, keep runners, stop loss, break even, whatever you want to do. Watch for those pullbacks. The larger frames, this is a bullish trend right now. If we come down to the five minute, just so I can show you guys what I mean by larger frames is bullish, this looks extremely bearish on Microsoft. We pushed huge, send it open, sell off right away. People that are scalpers looking at the smaller frames, they see this and they think, oh, I'm going to short this. I'm going to use this zone right here as a rejection. I'm going to short this right back down. They're not focused on the bigger picture. The zone we have right here will work as a rejection, but how much can we drop? Maybe we won't even drop. We just come and contest it and we break upside. Uh, and she just said uh, support is strong, good for a swing. Depending on the price of the contracts and what you can afford to buy into, a swing from Microsoft will be a solid, solid play. Uh, contributing factors that I like to look into is the QQQ strong, is the sector from Microsoft strong, which would be tech. You have to take other considerations than just the idea of, oh, this support held, I'm buying calls, this has to go right back up. Think about the overall market. Is the S&P hot? Is the tech sector hot? Is QQQ hot? If those sectors and QQ isn't like pushing like they should, what's the hot sector with the rotation? Is it material sector? Is it communications? Is it oil, energy? Like that's when you have to figure out from the market sentiment point of view. Going off the chart, if this level shows strength on buyers, I hope someone buys calls here. And if you do lose, realize your risk is a break on the downside. A break of this not holding, you can sell right away for a small loss. And if it does hold and push back up, you can look for a re-entry. The idea is the size light, add time, trust the process. If you want to size heavy, just understand if you're wrong and it drops 20%, if you're sized, say, 500 bucks on a $1,000 port, you're down 20%, you're down 100 bucks, that's 10% of your portfolio that quick. Can you afford to hold down 100 bucks on a 1K port? If you size one contract for, let's say, 50 bucks, that can go to zero. And you still save 50 bucks compared to size of 500 and you're down 10%. Does that make sense? The understanding of proper sizing, proper risk management, using your portfolio amount to actually find the best contract that fits your percentages. Size light, add time, trust the process. Uh, what was the next one? Uh, Blue map, you said CO. Is that, uh, I think that's something that we did last week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crude oil. I was thinking of cotton futures. We can do crude real quick. Okay, so just like always, I haven't looked at this in a while. So first visual that I go off of, I see lower highs forming. Can we break upside? If we don't break upside, we pull back. Where's the next support? So I'm looking at historical support zones. We have a nice higher, higher lows right there. And we also had a nice double bottom in this area. If you can see that right here. Going off that same level, we pulled this back a little bit. We kind of held support after this bull flag formed and we pushed upside, had a liquidity grab, pushed back up. So this zone is heavy. It's not as specific to the decimal, but just in this area, we're heavy. And if you pull that over to current times, that's basically the base of what we're forming right now. So knowing that, I can take this down to the 30 minute, the 15 minute. We're holding trends, making higher lows and higher highs. Could oil take off this week? That is the question that you, uh, people are probably going to be wondering. Can we break out? We have a nice support at roughly, I'd say, $70.70 .70 up to about $71. If we pull back and show strength with buyers, if that filters in, this rising wedge could continue and it could break out of that lower high trend that we have on the two hour right here. And if that does happen, we'll have a nice gap filled to roughly $73 a share, if not $73.50 a share. So we have a probability of a nice risk to reward right in this area. The main question I try and tell people, going off the larger frames, we have lower highs. But going off the like intermediate, uh, smaller frames, going off price action of support, we are holding at a very, very nice area. But we have to break this trend. If we do break the trend, the next level you have to focus on is the previous lower high, which is right here. So this would be the first gap fill if we break upside. Roughly 73 a share. If we break that area, we'll push the next previous uh, lower high and so on and so forth. Uh, let 
My, hey, I'm reading the chat. My bad, guys. FedEx. There we go. I had to catch up in the next one. FedEx. Let's see what this is doing. So I'm going to go to the daily because I have not charted at, uh, FedEx on TradingView before. So let's get a visual as to what's going on here. So we tapped out. So you, like, does this make sense to you guys as to why I start on the larger frame? Like, do you see this heavy rejection on FedEx in this area? We had like we popped up above before, pulled back and sold off. Historically, when it's above it, access support. This is a heavy zone, roughly 240 a share. FedEx didn't touch it on the initial Thursday push and the Friday open, but it's showing that like it wants to try and touch it, it wants to contest that level. So we know that 240 is going to be a massive level to break on the upside using the larger frames. So when going off of that, I'm focused on, okay, we have the larger frame resistance. We also understand that we're basically like rejecting roughly 233 to 235 a share. We're at that level right now with price action. Could we break downside or is it just consolidating out of support and this could just send right back up? We had lower, uh, lower lows forming and we basically just had I don't want to say the same double top, but slight price action of lower highs. And we finally broke upside. So when I'm looking at this, you have two different options. You can look for a trend recontest. A trend can be anywhere in this area. There's not a specific like point you have to draw this or put it. I just want to have a visual representation so that when I come down to the 30 minute or the smaller frames, I just understand that, okay, I don't have to scroll back all the way. I know there's a trend in this area. I see the trends. I have the lines there. So when just using the two hour, a pullback is going to be normal, but how much will we pull back? For me personally, I don't see a proper setup to make an entry in this. If you want to use just this heavy support right here, you definitely can. So you have a nice support at roughly 232 to 233 a share. The main resistance on FedEx is going to be roughly 240 a share. If you want to use the high from Thursday and Friday at 238 a share, you can also use that. But that's practically how I see this. Anything below the 231, 232, a lot of chop. There's going to be a lot of support in this area, roughly from, I'd say, 229 to 233 is going to be a lot of just up, down, up, down momentum. Do you generally look for calls, puts, or both? Do you day trade or swing trade? So when I am looking for plays, I, I play off the chart. If the chart shows me calls, I'll go calls. If the chart shows me puts, I'll go puts. I'm using overall market sediment to give myself a good overview of what could happen. So I'm not only focused on the idea of we're in a bull market. Well, we're in a uptrend bull market, whatever you want to call it. So I'm focused on calls right now. Every pullback, I want to see how strong the buying pressure is going to be. I'm not focused on trying to short the top because you follow trends. You always trade trends. At least I do. If you want to go against trends, be my guest, but you have to understand the risk that's associated you are risking the idea of you're buying the highs. How much can you hold in the red if it does reject? Where is your cut level? How is your uh, reaction to what the chart gives you basically after entering? And then you said, do you day trade or swing trade? I prefer to sell when levels hit. So it could be a day, it could be a week, could be a few days. I typically enter trades with an extra two to three weeks of time just to give myself room for the stock to move based off price action. If I do day trade, I plan the trim like a scalper would, but I lean towards swinging only if the chart allows that based off the setup. I'm not very big on bias with, oh, I'm swinging this. If the price action gives me the conviction to hold it, I will hold the trade longer. So it's all based off what the chart shows me. It's not just I'm going in for scalps. That's it. I want to know what the levels are doing. I want a bigger perspective on it all. So looking at Intel. I got to go to the daily because we broke out massive. There is not very much to do outside of this heavy resistance. Uh, about $38 a share. Anywhere in this area, you guys understand why I put this here? I'm on the daily seeing this. We had a lot of multiple rejections at the same area, roughly around $38 a share. So with me knowing that, I comprehend the idea of 38 is going to be heavy. If we break 38, Look at the gap fill here. This is on the larger picture. This is not the smaller frame. Smaller frames, we're going to have a gap fill around this area to tap out at roughly $40 a share. 
but the main fill in the bigger picture is $43 to $44 a share. When I take this down to the two hour or just a smaller frame to see pre-market and after hours, where could a nice support hit if we do pull back? With this running like it does, it's very questionable as to where is the support going to be. We had a massive breakout from the previous high. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. That is a decent pullback that's needed. I understand the idea of why don't you just use the previous price action in that area. This was a lot of chop. Do you want to trust chop or do you want to trust a heavy rejection that pulled back and broke out insanely? So a pullback to 33, that's a $3 drop. Very, very rare that may happen. But using this chop from uh, August of 2022, this may not be very effective due to the fact of where is the exact trim if you buy in? Where's the exact resistance? So you're not really too sure what could happen. Uh, and should support at 33.85. That's roughly where I have that highlight. Yeah, 33.85 to $34 a share. If you pull back this highlight that I have on the screen, it will also cover the, like basically the support that tried to hold, if you want to say that. That pullback, we tried to push back up. We broke the previous lower low but the strength wasn't heavy enough to keep it pushing. So we dropped right back under and we finally broke above that zone after another contest. Now we're above that. A pullback to roughly what you said of the 33.85 to $34 a share, that would be a massive entry for a support. If you're looking at resistance, you also have to understand this as well. Like I said earlier, this chop is very indecisive. It's hard to pinpoint what's going to happen, but we're right at the main spot of support X resistance in this chop. When the price action was above and pulled back, it held support pretty well. It's fake out dip, but it pulled back heavy on buyers. Once we dropped below, it acted as a major support uh, resistance. Every time it pushed up, rejected, rejected. We are currently at that area. So my best low risk, high reward scenario, if Intel pushes upside, say, let's, let's just say 37 to 37.20 a share, can we pull back and hold this as support? Does that make sense to everybody? If you buy the breakout, you're basically telling yourself, I hope this keeps running. Because if it just consolidates here when you're in, you're going to lose value, even though the stock is showing strength of holding at that zone. That's why I like to see a breakout, pull back, and if volume uh, buying pressure hits, I can enter calls and my risk is going to be whenever I want to sell or just a slow fade off. Resistance looks like 40.75 to 40.4 area. Yeah. I have a 40.41 area. Anywhere around 40 to 40, 40, 50. That's going to be a massive rejection. If we want to find a level before that, you could also, I think you just said it actually. Yeah. Uh, 3385. Yeah. 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 If we pull back to 3385, that's going to be a nice entry for calls or going long. Rejections, we're currently at one at roughly $36.50. First PT on the upside is roughly $38 a share. The gap fill that I can see happening in the next, I don't want to say week, but maybe two to three weeks is around $40 a share to $40.50 a share. If a breakout happens where it currently is at, see if a pullback can hold as support. Uh, I, I saw your question. Uh, your name just says iPad 2. I'll get to that in a second. Don't worry. Uh, Microsoft, we just did. Oh, American Airlines. That's AMD. You can't click that. Let's see what American Airlines is doing. I'm going to try and uh, speed through this a little bit more so we can talk a bit at the end because we are slowly approaching 9 o'clock. But let me see what I can do with this. So for those of you that may not know, American Airlines is one of my favorite small cap stocks to trade that's under, well, now under 20 bucks. This is one of those stocks I love to catch dips on the larger frames and ride them up. Last time I talked about this, when I alerted it, we bought in calls on American Airlines back here on the double bottom. And we rode that up, I think, for about 400 to 500% on like a, what, $15 contract, I think it was. So it was very small account friendly. And now that American Airlines is still pushing, travel stocks are hot right now. I don't know if you guys have noticed, Carnival has been running. Uh, Norwegian Airlines or Norwegian Cruise has been running. Delta's running, United, a lot of travel stuff is pushing. So thinking of travel, Airbnb, you have to put the whole sector in the focus of when people travel, what do they do? So looking at this, we're zoning based off uh, early 2022. 
We're currently approaching a lot of rejections that held American Airlines down back in uh, early 2023. So at this point, I need to go to the daily to see if there's any more price action back in that area. And there's not much going on. So since we missed the initial push on American Airlines, we have to look at the smaller frames to see, is there another option of entering if we have a pullback on the one hour, the 30 minute, larger frame, we already had the move. Buying and holding based off, this can keep going. The trends are going to hold. It's very risky. You have to understand price action and how rejections are right where they should be. American Airlines rejects a lot at roughly $16.80 a share. And that's currently where we basically rejected and pulled back. If we're looking for a strength on hold for support, it's very hard to pinpoint and it's not very easy to find right now. But I'd say roughly $16 a share for a pullback. So about 50 cents pullback. If we can hold that and slowly curl, we will form a nice handle on this cup, if you guys can see this. We're going to form something like this. We're going to pull back. We're going to push back up. We may pull back slightly, but make a higher low based off that first drop. And then we could send back up. The idea of breaking this resistance is the biggest part of it. And if you can catch the support at the bottom, you can ride that back up to the contest of $16.80 a share. Uh, Uber, Uber, Uber. Let's see what the Uber's break, Uber's travel stock. People travel to the airport. They don't want to get a taxi. They buy an Uber. Uber's pushing. A lot of stuff that revolves around traveling is having pushes currently. That's one thing to uh, take focus on when looking at stuff that may not have moved yet. It's possible that could be the next, I don't want to say rotation, but the next hot sector with stocks that like correlate in that area of travel. So right now, Uber obviously pushing heavy. We're almost around a nice rejection. So there's not much to really chart on this just because a pullback, there's not any main supports other than this area, which is a massive pullback to almost $38 a share. It's $5 pullback. And we're at resistance right now. So all I can really think about for low risk, high reward, if we break upside this $43.50, $44 a share, a push up and a pullback to hold that support, just like what happened in, in this area. When Uber was pushing, a lot of consolidation. When you see buying pressure hold, that's when you want to focus on, okay, this could have that leg up. It's holding here. It keeps coming down. It had a nice drop off. Uh, past the previous higher low so it looks invalid but once we break back above look at that pullback look at this pullback right here we broke upside pullback held shot up so if we break upside on uber have a pullback maybe consolidate that could be a solid entry for calls if you're willing to take that risk me personally i don't see a nice setup for going any trade direction with uber right now there could be better options on other stocks out there uh, where I leave off? WFC. Wells Fargo. I've never looked at this stock before. I can tell you that right now. Trying to break out. Basically, so all of this price action back here is invalid. There's no specific zones that you can use the pinpoint. So I'm going to take this down to the smaller frames around the one hour and 30 minute just to use the current price action. That's more valid. Going off zones, we're basically trying to hold from the previous tap out around $42.30 roughly, anywhere in that area. If you want to use the level below around $42 a share even, you can pull it down and use that as support. You can also make a trend line right here. This is a very solid setup if it shows uh, buying pressure. Volume has been lowering on these volume candles, but we're still holding the price at this level. So buyers, if they step in, this will rock it. The only thing is, where is the price target? Where are you going to sell on the way up? Overall, finance has been catching heat. I know Bank of America has been pushing too. So it's going to be important to see how Wells Fargo reacts if it breaks on the upside above roughly that 40, where was that? There it is. About $43.40 a share. The high that happened a few days ago is going to be a main, main area. Can we fill the gap? $42, hold this support, pushes up to $43 a share. Uh, someone said, uh, and I just saw this question. What is Hassan Jarvis and uh, Mir's trading style? 
I will answer that at the end. Let me finish this charting so I can get this recording done and I can stay after and chat with you guys for a bit. So now we're going over to Baba. I'm going to go, I know what Baba looks like and my charting is actually looking pretty good right now. I'm going to go to the four hour real quick. And actually, I don't think I'll need, so let me go back to the one hour. So I'll break down to you guys what my main idea with Baba was because right now we're pushing off of my zone at eighty-three or $87 a share. So we pushed up to the first PT and rejected heavy right at that $94.50 a share. I wanted to see, like I said here, uh, resistance to support flip, wait for a recontest and strength and enter. We are currently at my entry point for Baba for Coles. I wanted to see us push on the upside. If we broke, like without a drawdown to my support at $82 a share, if we broke up, I wanted to see us contest the first PT, pull back to this yellow highlight support right here. So if we can hold buying pressure and slowly curl with Baba, we can catch the upside move on this. There's a lot of price action, whether it's support or resistance based off where the stock is. Since we're above, this is going to act as a major support. If we hold, I am looking at Baba for calls this week or maybe two to three week out expiration and possibly swinging it. First PT touched, reject. Next PT is up to $102 a share, roughly $103. I would not be surprised if we have a push that gets us up to that direction. Going off the idea, if you're looking at where Baba was historically and not currently, we were making lower highs, also making lower lows a little bit. Now that the trends are reversing, we're contesting the previous lower high and we're trying to break it. If we pull back and hold support, that gives us conviction to realize trends are switching on Baba and bullish trends are forming higher lows, higher highs, this could trend up to 102 a share. So I'm looking at a hold at roughly $91 a share. And if it does hold and buying pressure hits, I will go calls on Baba. Uh, CJ, what's up, man? I just saw your comment. I know you're in here. Uh, AI, the, the bubble stock. Let's see what's happening. 8.59, we're not going to finish on time, so that's perfect. I'm on the four-hour right now for AI, only doing this because I know where it's been historically, and I know where it was a few months ago because everyone's playing it right now. We just broke above a historical support, and we're trying to hold it now on a pullback, just like with, uh, what stock was it? Was it American? It was either American Airlines or uh, Uber. A lot of chop. We're currently in the chop zone. So if you're trying to buy calls on AI, I would catch basically any dip you can. If we do break on the downside around $40 a share, it may be invalid. But just realize we have ran over uh, over 150% since the beginning of May for AI. So the way I look at it from my perspective, I don't want to chase where it's at because if I knew about this sooner, I could have bought in at roughly $20, uh, $20 a share, $22 a share the $34 share breakout level. I'm not going to play this because that's just my thought process. This is at a heavy level, a lot of chop that rejects. This may take a few days to like zone and then finally have strength to push, but it could also reject. So if you're looking for an entry point, I would be focused on roughly, let me put an actual level on this. Around 42.68, if you want a cut level, I personally would look at roughly $40.70 for a cut, and I'll change the color to red so you know. We'll do support color is blue. And if you want a resistance tap out, it's very difficult because you could just use the previous high, which was roughly about $49 a share. So that can be your PT if you do enter calls on a dip. That's going to be the gap fill. A lot of chop, so it's, it's very indecisive for my thought process. Uh, uh, Vince, I did Tesla to start. So if you want, the recording will be posted after I'm done. You can watch it back. That's fine. And if I have time, I can go to Tesla after I stop the recording. Uh, thank you. I'm starting a 1K account, so it's difficult to buy more than one long-term contract. Any advice or suggestions on which stocks to look at? Uh, iPad 2, the question you asked. I will answer that once we finish this charting session, if that sounds good. If you're unable to stay after 9 o'clock or 9.10, just let me know and I'll DM you afterwards. Uh, Donnie, so sorry to ask a dumb question. No such thing as a dumb question, man. Please realize that. Uh, new to trading. Which trading site do you recommend for option trading? I currently use Webull. 
Uh, Donnie, respond to this if you can. Do you trade SPY or SPX, or do you usually trade regular stocks like Apple, Amazon, uh, American Airlines, Ford, FUBU, uh, PayPal? Like, what's your niche? Oil stocks. So you play like uh, XOM, Chevron, that kind of stuff. My advice for this, uh, Webull has the cheapest contract prices for non-index stocks or non-indexes. So if you're trading like regular stocks, Amazon, Exxon Mobil, Chevron, FUBU, Tesla, those contracts will be way cheaper. So that's why I recommend Webull for that reason. If you're trading SPX or SPY, Webull, uh, Interactive Broker, TOS, all those are going to charge the same per contract half the time. It's usually $0.60 cents to $1.20 per contract. Webull only charges, I'd say, a few cents per contracts of regular stocks from my when I used to trade on Webull. Uh, the, the AI just did Roblox, Roblox, Roblox. I don't think many people know about that Webull stuff. If you're trading regular stocks, always trade on Webull. If you're not big, like if you don't need scalps or quick fills or like the best fills in the game, Webull is going to save you so much money on fees. We don't have Webull. Yeah, I, I, Webull is not available in Europe. I would use TOS, Interactive Broker, or uh, what is it? Findley. I don't know how to pronounce it. Where's my Roblox at? Oh, geez. R, R, R. Where you at, buddy? I'm blind. Oh, I already added it. There it is. Okay. I'm going to go to the daily, which I think I know Roblox is curling from the lows. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so this is a setup that I like on the larger frames for swings with time. We got lower highs. It's very, very sketchy on lower highs. I get that. But we're also trying to catch these higher lows as well. So we're kind of getting the sideways wedge, symmetrical triangle, whatever you want to call it. Using the overall picture, I understand that uh, Roblox is squeezing. It's slowly squeezing to a pinpoint. So taking it down to the two-hour, the three-hour, the four-hour, whatever it may be, I want to see on the smaller frames, is there major support levels? Is there major resistance within this triangle? So just going off more recent times, we rejected the level we should have. Support is very iffy to find, but just going off visuals, we have a nice support at the bottom of this area. It's going to be a massive drop, 3 to $4 a share. If you can wait and not risk just buying in blindly, this area right here will be nice for support. We already rejected. So if we do break upside before a pullback, look at that 4270 a share. Break on the upside, pull back to hold the support. Always use the uh, resistance to support flips or support to resistance flips for your plays. It will give you more of an edge. Buying the breakout contracts are juiced. They're going to cost more than they should based off buying pressure and the stock price moving. So I like to wait for the pullbacks to that support. Uh, okay, I see there's a lot of people talking. Hang on, let me get through these stocks and we'll answer all these afterwards. I saw you guys mention Robinhood. So I got a, I've personally never used Robinhood. I don't recommend it only because it's hard to chart on there compared to other platforms, but it is, I don't want to say it's a solid broker, but you can use Robinhood. I'm not against any broker as long as you can make money on it and you understand the risk that comes with those platforms. So looking at Coinbase, you said something after new deal with the SEC. Coinbase has massive liquidity grabs. Obviously, we've sold off. We're making lower highs, blah, blah, blah. I get that. News made Coinbase sell off. Could have been a scare. Could market makers and hedge funds have bought the dip because they know it was not real news and it's not going to happen with the SEC banning crypto. I look at outside factors when the news is severe with the SEC or just government affiliates inside that news report. So going off Coinbase, there's a lot of resistance coming up on this upside. At roughly $57 to $58 a share, we're zoning. So personally for me, I want to see Coinbase drop lower down to roughly $50 a share again before I even think about calls. I don't want to just buy stuff. I'm on the larger frame, so it looks a lot different than going like to the 30 minute. There may be a nice setup on the 30 minute, even though there's also a lot of zoning right here. Historically acted as uh, support. Now it should act as resistance. I would like to see a pullback to get calls at the bottom and just kind of swing slash scalp this zone notice how the zone just it goes up back down back up back down play the zones wait for the zones to hit 
size light, trust the move. Once the gap fill happens or the gap is slowly filling, you can trim along the way. So right now, coin for me, I would not be watching. But if you do want just my personal analysis, heavy resistance at roughly $57 a share. Nice support buys at roughly $50 to $51 if we have that pullback. But this could be a nice breakout if we get some nice traction on the buying pressure. TWLO. I don't think I've ever looked at this stock either. Let's go back to the four. Well, let's go to the daily. I want to see where this is at on a bigger perspective. So let's see. So just going off the daily, as you guys can see, these are the stuff I like to look for. Notice how we pushed up, came down. Once we broke back above, we had a little bit of a sell-off, but we held quicker than it usually is when it consolidates below the level. So this area is a nice dip buy or a liquidity grab on the upside for sellers to hit and take profit. We're currently at that level. So could uh, TWLO, could this be a solid play? I don't really know much about how it moves, the volume, but just going off the two hour right here. We held a double bottom. So we know buying pressure was heavy when we came down. We understand there's nice price action when it dips. We're at the highs right now. A lot of chop. This whole area is chop. So understand the risk that may come with this. If we do dip, you can get a nice entry point. I'd say roughly around this area right here. Around right here. Roughly $63 a share to $64 a share. That would be a nice entry. If we take this to the 30 minute, I'm doing this just for a visual for you guys. Understand the idea that we are making higher lows on the smaller frames, but we are also keeping lower highs. So we're squeezing on a kind of rising triangle. I'm not very big with terminology. I'm just big on price action. We're holding the same resistance slightly lower as it comes back up, but we're making higher lows. So we are squeezing on this stock. There is a massive move coming, whether it's the upside or the downside. If we push upside, realize the gap fill that could happen. A lot of chop, a lot of areas. There's not a specific air, uh, zone that could touch, but the idea of the move up, when this level holds and breaks at the 67 to 68 hours a share, the move is massive before it pulls back. So this could be a nice continuation play. Uh, uh, Perez, class tomorrow, Tuesday. I don't know if he left already or not. Uh, hang on, where was I just after this? Okay, so that's basically all the stocks that we were talking about. Does anyone have any last-minute stuff they want me to look at before I answer questions and we can chop it up for a bit? Any last-minute stocks? Apple, Amazon, Netflix. There's a few major ones no one really uh, typed out, so I just want to make sure I don't miss anything before I stop the recording and we can answer some questions. I'll give it a few seconds for you guys to type if need be. It looks like we may be good. Oh, there we go. Someone just said Amazon. Oh, Bank of America. Here we go. We got a few more coming in. So after Bank of America, Amazon, and Netflix, I'm going to stop the charting. So if you guys are here just for that, you'll know when I'll be done. But I'm going to stay after and answer any questions, and we can talk for a bit. So going off Bank of America, okay, see, this is why larger frames are important. So if I'm on the smaller frames, a 30-minute, this is really all you see. A lot of chop, a lot of up, down, up, down. If I come to the larger frames now, the four-hour, the daily, whatever it could be, look at these liquidity grabs as a support, which correlate that to where we currently are. Could we break out? Could this just be the resistance before the next drawdown? This is why I like to get a visual perspective of the larger picture, and then I work my way down to see in the smaller frames what are trends doing that could lead into the breakout of the larger picture. Also going back a little bit more, pushed up and rejected that same area. So Bank of America is currently at that resistance going off historical price action. If I take this down to the 30 minute, we can use this to find trends to see if there's a move that we may not have seen on the larger picture. We're trying to make higher lows, and we're kind of just zoning 
in this area right here. Nice resistance at the top of this zone at roughly, I'd say, $29.50 a share to a high of $29.80 a share. If we break out of this zone, use historical price action as a gauge as to what possibly could happen as repetition. Last time we broke out of this level, within two days, Bank of America ran to roughly $31.30 a share. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if buying pressure keeps squeezing with higher lows while keeping the same resistance, this will have to squeeze one way or the other, whether it's down or back up. Uh, Daily Trend 2 could reject down to 27 or break out above. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly. 27 is the main, basically previous lower previous higher low off the trends in this area. If we pull back that massive, there's not much room going to hold that up since there's a lot of chop and indecisive. If we break out, this could go up very, very well. Let's go to Amazon. I have a lot chart on this, I think, too. Yeah. Let's go to the four hour first. So Amazon right now, has not moved much in the last week. So I'm not going to have to change any levels. I'm going to take this down to the, let's go 30 minute just to get a better picture on the smaller frame. So initially when I was looking at Amazon, I wanted to see us on the week coming up Monday right here. I wanted to see a pullback to support at 120 and push up. And we totally sent on Monday upside. That was the biggest move uh, Amazon had in a while. So that push up, now we're just consolidating at the previous high, trying to break out. I have a massive support level, which was the first PT at roughly 125 a share. If 125 a share can hold and push upside, since we broke above, I want to see it hold as support. 125 is currently holding very well as support. If that holds, I honestly am looking at 137 a share, not in a week, not in a day, not in a month. This is like a trend move two months, three months, maybe sooner if it has amazing news or just massive buying pressure. But look at the gap fill on the daily for Amazon. There is not much price action in between the daily for Amazon. If this breaks out with volume, this is going to push back-to-back -back green days. Maybe a slight pullback one of those days, but the volume pressure is going to be heavy on the buying side. Sellers will not hit until my target at roughly, I'd say, 135 a share to 137 a share. And then uh, Netflix, I don't know if that's on my list. So I'm going to have to type this in. And we can go to the four hour on Netflix because we're basically at the gap fill. Yeah. So Netflix right now, just like, I think it was same as like Microsoft, NVIDIA, uh, what was it? American Airlines, it had the push for the larger picture. Going off that, you have to understand the risk. A pullback would be necessary, but could it pull back? You're looking at the visual of low risk, high reward. You're not just focused on, oh, M uh, Netflix has been running nonstop. I'm just going to buy the trend and hold for the next leg up. At any point, this can sell off. That's one of the biggest things that people have to remember about blindly buying in off the smaller frames. Going off the larger picture, we practically filled the gap. All this consolidation broke right here. And notice if we bring this over, that's what we kept rejecting before we finally broke out. So now that we're above, how much higher can Netflix go? Could there be a pullback? Where's the rejection? A lot of liquidity grabs on the downside when this was acting as support. This will now act as resistance. We could fill on the upside to roughly 460 a share to 465 on Netflix. Not this week, not next week. It could take a month. But that is the logical fill if buying pressure continues. If we have a pullback, I am not interested in buying Netflix until we touch roughly 400 a share again. So a $30 drop is going to be my entry for calls. If we get some trends on like the 30 minute or the 15, I can look at this and find an entry point on the smaller frames. Playing the smaller frames, I'm not looking for a massive 20 point move for the contract. I'm focused on I'm going to get in and get out for a 30% gain, 50% gain, whatever it may be. I'm focused on levels just like we did the same with, uh, was it Intel or Chevron? It was one of the ones I, oh, no, it was uh, Microsoft. As it pulls back, you're looking for that liquidity grab and the push back up. So that's what we're focused on with Netflix. If you don't want to wait for 400 a share, you have to look at it on the smaller frames to get that picture of what you're going to do. So I'll ask this one more time. Any last minute stuff? I'm going to switch over to SPY real quick so we can end with the overall market. 
and then we can chop it up and I can answer some questions I saw you guys typing earlier. I'm going to chart SPY instead of the S&P or SPX only because uh, Hassan, aka Rippy God, he gives his breakdown and the analysis for SPX. So I don't want to interfere with him because that is his, like, that's his golden ticker, aka index, whatever you want to call it. So just going off SPY, I will give you a brief explanation of what I think could happen this week. I'm not going to be direct because anything can change in any like, time. I'm not going to make anything serious. I'm just going to tell you the main gap fill on the downside and then the main gap fill on the upside. So when looking for a pullback, I would like to see us pull back. Why is it not going? There we go. I personally would like to see a pullback to roughly 430 a share to 431 a share. We broke out from the previous lower high on the larger frames, making lower highs on the downside. We broke above that. So could we pull back to it now? I'm not saying we will, and I'm not saying we could. I'm just throwing out the gap fills that I would like to see happen to make an entry. Going off the resistance gap fill, we have this price action right here, which is roughly $450 a share on SPY. We're in the dead center. Notice how my support is 430, resistance is 450. Current price is around 440. I'm not going to take a long or a short on the larger frame for SPY. I have to go to the 30 minute and find a smaller frame scalp if I want to play it. That is how I will look at it if I end up playing it. So going off the trends, we're making higher lows. We're also squeezing with the price action. I can move this one down. Could SPY keep this going with higher highs, higher lows? Could we pull back and hit the previous support before bouncing again? This is when in the moment, like price action is going to help you determine what you want to do. I see the bigger picture, 430 for support, 450 for the top. I know we're in the middle. I'm not looking at the bigger picture for SPY. I'm going to wait and see how the market reacts, and that's what I'm going to do based off it. If you want smaller frame zones, I will give you some levels just because SPY is a massive index people love watching. Going off of Wednesday's high, you can use the price action because when we pulled upside on Thursday, we had a lot of consolidation basically around the previous day high. So around, I, I like giving it leg room. If you're looking for calls, I like to pull support down a little bit. So it makes me wait for the stock longer than just saying, oh, if I put it up here, we're right at that support. I want to pull it down a bit. So when I'm looking at this, roughly 430, 438.70 a share. If we pull back and hold that, it'd be nice. It's only a dollar drop, so it could fake out below. Below that support, I can see another one happening at roughly 40. 437.3 a share. If you want upside potential, literally just use the high from Thursday and also the high from Friday. So kind of around the area of 443 a share would be a nice resistance if we push or gap up overnight. And I'm going to end the recording right here.